Hello, hello, hello. Good morning and welcome. You are on the mountain with Rick and Luthien, and it is time for some Splinterlands. How y'all doing out there in Twitch land tonight? What is Hi, good? Bushwack. I see Bushwack's here. Hello, Bushwack. Rick is right here, bud. I, I guess I should put myself on live as well, huh? Probably be I, a good thing. I'm very excited. We are, uh, I'm gonna start a tournament for the first time, and so that's why I'm so glad to have you here, because, uh, as someone who is a little bit more versed in tournamentary than myself, <laughs> all, all I know about tournaments is how to lose them badly. I am really, really good at that, though. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not particularly good at tournaments. I think I've won one tournament ever. Maybe two. Tops. You gotta love setting up the new scene on the fly when you're already live. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, do you actually like run tournaments, or do you you just play them? I know you, you've done a lot of streams with tournaments and whatnot. Um, I've done a few. Um, like I've hosted a few, but I haven't done it in a while. Fair enough. I've also I think, been. Oh, go ahead. I think the last the last one I did was my for my birthday, which was in February. Well, happy so very ending. late and uh, <laughs> also very early birthday. Because <laughs> I guess one's closer than the other. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're... So yeah, Buns, Bags, and Caps is actually going to be uh, kind of doing the stream with me. Um, for those of you who are out there and have not been privy to the conversations leading up to this, I was hoping that I was going to be able to get Luthien to join me on my Saturday morning Splinterlands TV streams, but it just does not work out well with the schedule. But uh, we're going to probably set it up for that time frame as well. No, I mean, guilds, not events. That's not going to help. <laughs> Can't set up a tournament from the guilds page. Chaos packs for prizes. Oh yes, but on a more important things. So while I'm doing that, so I, I've had a, a, a bunch of questions for you as well as someone who has you know been in the space for a little bit longer and is one of the larger kind of streamers in the. Uh, community and whatnot so when and how did you first find out about splinterlands like when did you join us it was right around the time that dice pack sold out so august of 2021 was it um yeah right around there because that was the same yeah. time i started in, in july so like just before sps actually came out you know, the SPS airdrop had just started. Oh, okay. I thought so, you had actually been here longer than me. No, I haven't. Um, so I had a whole bunch of of crypto. I, I don't know if you've heard of AMP token. Um, yes. But I had a whole bunch of AMP. And Baron actually found Splinterlands. And I liked it so much that I decided to sell all of my AMP and buy dice packs with it. So thank goodness I did that before they sold out. I only wish I had bought more. Right, I got one dice pack and out of that I got, <laughs> just insanely lucky. I got uh, two copies each of Kid Guff and Vera. Now granted, oh, wow. out of all of the summoners you could get, that is the two worst, but still yeah. like that was the first time that I actually owned summoners and especially with, with multiple BCX. So it was like, right. that was kind of a, a big, big uh, jump on, on my journey. But I, like, yeah. I remember back then 
buying like I, I built my chicken up to level three for less than 25 cents per bcx i built oh my, my mylor up to level two for less than 25 cents per bcx like it was so crazy cheap back then and like yeah. i remember i was in i don't even remember the name of the guild but I, I was not with them for very long but i remember one day i was looking at the market and i saw a gold foil contessa lament for 350 and I actually oh popped gosh. into my guild chat and I was like, yo, there is a gold foil Contessa here for 350. That seems good. Should I buy it? And then nobody got back to me because the guild was pretty much dead. And so I, I didn't actually buy that. I instead bought a bunch of other cards and whatnot. I think I ended up going to like level six Nectar Queen or something like that because I didn't realize oh that I couldn't use a level six. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I love this card. This card is a beast and i went all in and then i was like wait why isn't it leveled up and so it it, it took a little while before i realized it and yeah. learned oh dang that's uh yeah that's a big problem <laughs> but uh yeah it was like so crazy back then what so what are your like what's your favorite splinter to play and your least favorite um i really like dragon obviously that's like the best splinter Everybody likes dragon, but besides dragon, probably water. And honestly, I've I've never been that huge of a fan of of dragon. Mostly really? because I never owned any dragon cards, and it was like, okay, well, like the best dragon card that I owned all this time was pretty much another one of those good moves that I made uh, very early on. I got sick and tired of losing earthquake matches, so. <laughs> And I was also had already figured out that I wanted to do all gold everything. So I went ahead and I picked up for eight dollars my first major purchase in the game. I picked up a gold bright eagle. Oh my gosh! I got a, I got a whole bunch of those in um, dice packs, and I ended up selling um, near the top. I think I got like six hundred dollars for the, for that bright and bloom. It was leveled up. I don't remember what level it was. Nice. But it was like a crazy amount, so I'm glad I I'm glad I sold it when I did. Right. So so have you heard about my major move last week? I know it's it's made its way uh, uh, through the it community did. pretty large, um, but I I don't know if, if everyone's known about it. So I yeah I heard you sold all of your cards. And not quite all, but yeah, pretty darn close. Um, and uh, not you know not leaving the game or anything like that. Of course, just uh, I wanted. I was sick and tired of having a, such a pitiful amount of SPS, and I realized that you know I'm not that good of a player. Just being honest, and um, I also have pretty terrible luck in terms of the rewards. Like right. since SPS rewards have come out, I have never opened a chest that had 20 or more in it. The most I've ever opened in a single chest was like 14.89. And like my last season's chest, I opened 50 gold chests and I got 14 SPS out of them. So it's Gosh. like, you know, I can earn a lot more SPS by not sitting here getting frustrated at how much I lose. And if I just sell the cards, buy the SPS, stake the SPS, and then, oh yeah, there's this whole GLX thing that's going on too, like just for added right. benefit. Right. So like, You I'm, know, what ahead. I would have done personally is I would have rented everything out. I and think you can get, you could have gotten more value that way and then turn the DEC into SPS. Yes, and that's something that I'm still doing. Like all of the cards that didn't sell, you know, relatively quickly, I've, I've pretty much pulled all of them off the market, sent them over to my rental account. So now I am yeah. earning about 1,000 to 1,500 DEC a day, um, hey, which is bad. also helpful and is covering most of my rental costs. Because um, yeah. another part of it was with Lux Vega coming out and of course Jim, uh, got his two gold foils, so I had to wait a little while for my Lux because we already had it, you know, set to where um, I was gonna get uh, a long-term delegation slash rental Lux from him. Right. And uh, and then all of a sudden, both of his Luxes were gold, so he had to crazy. figure out how to how to you know maneuver that situation and whatnot, and had to get a copy of Lux for me. So I've only had her for a couple of days now, but. Yeah. Uh, 
and then because of that and then selling all the cards renting and whatnot and i've decided that i'm i'm going to make a concerted push for diamond to try and actually get some of those decent uh chests and yeah. so um switching over to modern was a big part of it and also like that meant uh, everything i've been doing up to that point was all all gold like I was not buying hardly anything that wasn't gold except for certain legendaries, but even like epics, if I was gonna buy an epic, I was gonna buy it in gold. And so that was where most of my collection came from and whatnot, but I was realizing that, you know, how much more expensive it's gonna be to push into diamond with all gold foil everything is- You know, it, it depends on the cards though. Like there have been times where I have gotten gold foil cards that were cheaper than regular foil cards. Oh yeah, it definitely happens and I still keep my eye out for those kind of opportunities because I still, you know, gold foils are the way to go in the long term, absolutely. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not, I have not changed my mind on that. I'm just realizing that with my situation and whatnot, I was not able to push the deck up to that required level right, by continuing right. to go with gold. Right, right, makes sense. Um, actually recently, I don't know. I guess I guess it's not so recent anymore. A few months ago, um, I got a max level gold foil lone boatman for three hundred and eighty dollars. Nice. And the the regular foil one was three hundred and seventy dollars. So it was only like ten dollars more to get the max gold foil one than it was to get the regular foil. It was crazy. Yeah, that's that's a score right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I've, I've started kind of turning around on Dragon because I have a, a Carnish Titan and uh, somebody loaned me a Vigilator for a little while. That was oh, very yeah, that's fun a nice to, one. to play with, um, especially that combination. And then with Grund up front, <laughs> it's just yeah. like double strike, 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 double strike. I'm just going to take 30 attacks per turn. And if you're still alive, we'll see what you can do. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and, and then uh, now since I started over, you know, with Lux and pushing up through Modern and whatnot, um, I was realizing that Lux is just not doing it for me. Um, the, the plan was to p try and push into Diamond using only Lux and then uh, over time taking the earnings from that to build a max level Fispa so that I had a four mana summoner for the, um, the Little League matches. But right. uh, yeah, I, I was on such a losing streak on the very first time I played it that one of the, the viewers actually sent me some DEC and said, Rent Kitty. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> and oh man, have I been missing out all this time. Like I had Kitty never is the best. played Kitty until that day. Um, and yeah, it's, it's wow. <laughs> yeah, Kitty is insane. That's definitely my favorite card and I wish I owned it, but I don't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and like it, when Dwayne was selling his kitty, I was like, okay, you know, cool, good for you. you know, I, I I didn't really understand the whole reticence behind it until now that I've been playing with her. Like, yeah, I don't know if I actually could. And uh, Hawks was talking on one of his videos about how like after all of the the layoffs and everything, how all of the cards have gone down except Kitty. Like, oh, kitty even is even still Kitty's still gone down. Oh, she has Kitty's, now? yeah, she's still expensive, but before the layoffs, it was closer to five thousand dollars for a max one. I'm looking at him right now, three thousand nine hundred and eighty-nine is the cheapest. And Hawks is actually selling his. Yeah, because he was saying like, since Kitty is the, the only card that has basically not been touched, he was thinking about I'm gonna sell it and then reallocate those assets into other cards that have dropped significantly in value. And I was like, you yeah, know, that, that's a pretty good call right there. Uh, yeah. Even, yeah, and then I, I did in the comments, like, it, that is, it sounds like that's the way to go. And then full disclosure, I did just sell all of my cards. And I got <laughs> so many replies like, so you just quit the game? No. Right. <laughs> I, I'm not quitting the game. I'm just reallocating assets. I'm still playing. I'm still on Splinterlands TV. I'm still streaming every single night. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I right. just, I wanted more SPS and I could not resist the call of four cent SPS. Like That's I missed out throughout the cheap. airdrop because I like, I was here for all of it. Well, the first like month I was playing on mobile. And so I didn't really have access to it, even though I knew it was going on until, yeah. um, 
until my guild leader figured out that he, and different guild at this point uh that was what under a stealth trader at uh, in the elite guild um mm -hmm. and he figured out how to access it on mobile you just had to log into the regular site instead of the mobile site and then you had to make sure that everything was set up on your phone correctly and then you could turn it sideways and then you could actually access the SPS button but only if you did like those five steps first and it was like crazy but once I got there it was like all right but I I missed out on or it just didn't really click in my head how ridiculously valuable DEC was in terms of the SPS airdrop so I kept yeah. buying cards with my DEC that I was earning and I shouldn't right. have I should have yes. just stack that DEC the entire time and then yeah. I, you know I finally realized it like and how people were like breaking the system by just hodling DEC uh, but it was like two months left in it and so I started but it wasn't enough and yeah. so I got up to like 2000 SPS and I was finally happy with that and then Rift Watchers came out <laughs> And I was like, okay, well, um, I, I learned my lesson on Dr. Blight. I need Usher. So yeah. I unstaked it, got everything ready, and I was in line. I was waiting. I was streaming, and I got my 50 packs in the pre-sale. Only I was 30 seconds too late, and so oh, I don't no. get my Usher. Uh, well, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> well, sorry. I mean, it's not your fault. It's 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 my fault. I, I was not quicker. But uh, and I, I was a little bitter about that for a little while, especially when we saw three of those proposals pass and then the one that leads to me getting my usher is like 17% that... and it's just like... Okay, ah. that pissed me off too. Okay, I I was able to get all of my packs in the pre-sale, okay? But I still voted for that proposal because I didn't think it was right that they wanted to give you know uh the the extra packs to the people who didn't put in their vouchers that was not right they right. they wanted to fix that but they wouldn't fix the people who you know took the time to put in their the voucher number like come on exactly. it, i don't know it's just like, that pissed me off so much i'm so salty about it and my my big plan then was i was actually i was really going for a hundred rift watchers packs because i had the vouchers to be able to use too i just i right couldn't come up with enough SPS to do the 100 packs. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to get my 50 at least, so I'm guaranteed my Osher. And, yeah. you know, what got me about it was the fact that I had no idea until three days later whether or not I was in the presale or not. Like, I didn't even know if it affected me. Either way, I still would have voted for the three-minute window because I believe that the three-minute window, like, if you're there in the first three minutes, then you're there. That, that's, yeah. uh, I mean... And I, I will vote for that if they bring it to a proposal moving forward because it is something and it's not like they pulled it out of nowhere. They had mentioned that they were, you know, going to do that three minute window moving forward. So it was just, OK, well, we should apply it to this sale, too. And it's like, yeah, they should have. They should have. And I, it's something that I I'm still a little bit bitter about, even though it didn't affect me. You know, it's like I just felt like they made it right for some people, but not for others. Exactly. And, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't fair. And I didn't understand why so many people voted against that proposal, but for the other ones, you know. And, and I mean, when when the numbers were broken down to me, it made more sense, but still didn't you know fully make sense. Because yeah. I guess it, by adding in those packs, they added like one percent to the print rate of Osher. By adding in the three-minute window, it would have been like fifteen percent. But still, like that's—I mean, it's still a, a very limited edition card. It's not like they're opening the printing presses to everybody. It's not like they're you know going dollar with it. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, first and foremost, this is a game. You know, exactly. I know a, a lot of people see this as an investment, and yeah, there's an investment side to it, sure, but. First and foremost, this is a game and, you know, we want people to enjoy it. And a lot of people were really pissed as well. They should be by the way that that presale was, was handled and how, you know, the proposals turned out and all that. It was, I don't know. The whole thing just really rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, I, I concur. And like, is, 
I mean, I'm I'm probably not going to be buying any more Rift Watchers packs. Um, if they do go DEC, then maybe. Um, but I'm not a big fan of buying packs off the secondary market. I know I'm actually looking at buying a pack off the secondary market right now just to throw it up on the uh, uh, on the the tournament as a as a prize and whatnot. But like, I I prefer to get my packs through Splinterlands so that I'm you know eligible for those airdrops and whatnot. And like, yeah. I've been actually insanely lucky. Let's actually get out of there. I'm gonna go take a look at check who like for only 35 packs that i've purchased on my main account like i got i got one uriel off of three packs i got one uriel i didn't get oh a lira i didn't get a bacteria i didn't get a dr blight i didn't get an isa i got one grum i got uh one carnage titan one grandmaster wraith and one yasek that's insane yeah off of 35 packs so like I'm I'm pretty happy with the airdrops overall from from Chaos Legion, but yeah, it's like that. Just the promo one is like it, it's such a like, ugh. and I mean I didn't expect the Doctor Blight. I had two eligible packs at that point because right. yeah, I really wasn't earning anything and I didn't have any money to actually throw into it either. Um, but yeah, it's it's been like very interesting how that's kind of played out. And then, oh man, Lyra, I, I just picked her, uh, picked up one of her not too long ago, and man, have I been sleeping on that card? She's a beast. <laughs> yeah, I like that opportunity, and yes. with the with the swiftness. Oh man, she's so good. I use her all the time. She's really good with Kitty. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And any swiftness with Kitty is gonna be amazing. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just started getting to the point where like I was running Yasik with. Uh, um, Sinash and Supply mm -hmm. Runner. Yeah. And it's like, e even though these guys are not doing any damage where it matters, it doesn't matter because I got a Grum up front that is now at five speed before he starts bloodlusting. <laughs> like, you're just not yeah. doing anything with that. Like, yeah. <laughs> good luck dodging. Yep. Yeah, speed crazy. is is absolutely broken in this game. And I feel like that is actually one of the things that has not been mentioned in any town hall, anything like that. But I feel like there there needs to be some eyes on the whole mischance calculation thing. Because absolutely. I feel like what we're told the math is and what the math actually is, those are not the same thing. Um, I agree with that. I actually played a match... Um, shortly before we started the call where I played Kitty Almo and the other side played Yoden or something and so my Almo I don't remember exactly how much speed it had like you know eight nine speed something like that and they kept hitting me these four speed monsters kept hitting me and no it was not aim true rule set but they still kept hitting me like I should have won that match but they just kept hitting you know yeah that's it's it's ridiculous and like I've had situations where I've literally like, I have had a speed-boosted Pelicor Arbalest, you know, attacking a slower monster and missing for three games in a row. Didn't hit a single attack. And then over, you know, 10 of the next 12 games, I'm going up against a Pelicor Arbalest, and I've got them slowed, so they're at one speed, and yet they don't miss a single time, even when they're attacking four or five speed in my front line. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> hey, yep, I completely agree with you. And like, I, it's like every time I see the Arbalist, it's like, if he hits, I'm in trouble. And yeah. I never, you, Bushwhack can, can verify. He's seen like, um, I think my last like five streams, Bushwhack has been in there and he's seen every game where it's like, okay. Um, my Arbalest is going to miss every single shot, and your Arbalest is going to hit every single shot, even though the odds are technically in my favor. Like, I, I don't get it. And I think even the math that we're given is a little bit disproportionate. Like, Phantom of the Abyss should not be as good as it is. Yeah. Like, it that card is just too powerful. And I mean... If that got fixed, it would hurt me. I do own 
Phantom of the Abyss. It is my favorite card. So, like, I, I'm arguing against myself here, but the game would be a lot better if things were a little bit closer. Like, you shouldn't be able to just dodge everything. It should be yeah. actually chances and not, like, guarantees, unless it's aimed true. And, of course, if the speed thing were fixed, then Kitty probably goes up in price even more, because aim true yeah. on your summoner is ridiculous <laughs> yeah it really is it really is so what yeah is... i th oh, i think ahead. that there's there's just too much rng based stuff yes you know I, what i mean like it, there's it's a little bit too much i feel like there should be less rng and more skill yeah and i'm i'm 100 percent with that because the rng uh does not tend to be in my favor and it's kind of the same thing like I love the Warsaken cards. I'm very excited about the Warsaken game. I don't really care for Blitz because it's entirely decided by the dice. Like if I roll a six and then you roll a one and then I roll a six and then you roll a one, the game is not over, but it's effectively over. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't play Warsaken. I've just watched it a little bit. Um, I've seen Drabs playing it, but yeah, I, I saw that happen where Mitri Man was playing Good Trouble, I think. And um, Mitri Man ended up winning because of a, a dice roll like that. Where, you know, I mean, I don't know what you call it. But Good Trouble got like a one and a two or, you know, whatever. And so yeah, Mitri and Man it, I mean, and I mean, uh, there is always going to be that element of RNG. In, unless it is a pure skill game like chess, go, whatever, you know, if, if there's any RNG, then there will always be games that are decided by RNG. And I don't necessarily have a problem with that. But I don't like how everything is decided by RNG. And from yeah. what cards you get to, you know, um, whether or not things hit, like, it, it's so much rng to the point where you know even skill is somewhat irrelevant compared to you know how lucky you actually get on your rolls and i yep. feel like it, it's it's kind of disproportionate yeah was, yeah I, I agree was good jb was good crypto ace Rick hello oh wow Rick <laughs> oh wow um well, now we've got a couple people in here, so fantastic. So what is your favorite common card? My favorite common card? Oh, yes. how do I choose? Let me go look at common cards and see, because I can't, I can't think of one offhand. Um, let's see, common cards. Oh my gosh, there's so many good ones, though. How, how do you expect me to pick one? <laughs> I should have warned you about that question because it, it was coming, but... Uh... I mean, I really like Welp Herder. I think that one's fantastic. Um, Dumac Exile, that's another good one. For, it's from Rift Watchers. I'm a big fan of Dumac Exile. That was actually the first thing that I pulled in gold out of Rift Watchers, and I was like, oh, oh, that's, that's fun. Yeah, I... it pairs so well with that Life Sneak team. It is yeah. so good. Yeah, especially um, when you can throw the uh, the Immortal Shield Bearer in the front and then still be dealing like seven damage a turn at their back line. It's just insane. Yeah, yeah it is really, really good. Um, trying to see if there's any other ones. I mean, there's a there's a lot of cards that I like. It's it's like asking me to choose a favorite food. I can't I can't choose a favorite food. I love food. What what was yours? Chana Masala. Chana Masala? Yes. It's uh, kind of like it, I know it's Indian food. It's like curry. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've made Chana Masala. Is, is that yellow curry? It's like yellow curry. I think I've made it before. We like Indian food. I make Indian food a lot. Nice. I make like butter, and not butter chicken because we don't eat meat, but butter tofu. I have um, never made Indian food, but uh, it is definitely my favorite, like, foreign cuisine. Um, it's, yeah, phenomenal. Even, like, when I was over in Okinawa for a year, uh, when I was in the Marines, like, they had Curry House over there as one of the big chains on the island. And yeah. I went to every single one of them. And, uh, like, they're, I actually figured out the secret. They, they will, uh, 
whenever you order anything, of course, they'll you know, ask you how hot you want it, and it's a scale of one to ten. And right. if you want it super hot, don't order ten. Because yeah. <laughs> order three they're or four. used to white people going in there and ordering ten and being like, oh my god, I'm dying. So get eight. Not even nine. Get eight if you want the spiciest one that they have. Because and and yeah, I'm I'm big into spice. Uh, you might have heard about the, the one chip challenge that I did on my stream. Um, no, I didn't hear about that. I, oh. I can't eat too much spicy food. <laughs> you know what? I used to love it. And then after, well, I, you know, I have five kids. And during one of my pregnancies, I had really, really bad heartburn. And ever since then, I just cannot tolerate spicy food. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I could not imagine my life without spicy food. It's like I lived with a, a chick for a little while, a roommate, um, that uh, she was allergic to uh, strawberries, chocolate, and black pepper. And I'm like, oh, that's terrible. I don't know how you do without one of those. Yeah. Or maybe I could do one, but two? No. And then yeah. all three of them combined, like you can't have pepper. Like, how do you how do you eat without pepper? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's just ridiculous. Put pepper in everything. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, what do I start with? Garlic and then pepper, and right. then we can add in anything else. But like, garlic and pepper is the base. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> I could probably go vegetarian as long as I could still add bacon. Like. I, I'm the type of guy I want to take. Wouldn't be vegetarian. <laughs> I know that that's the point. That's why it's funny. But like, I I'm the type of kind of guy I want to take a side of bacon, and then I want to wrap it in bacon, and then I want to deep fry it in bacon fat, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and then pull it out and scribble some bacon crumbles on top. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I like bacon. What can I say? <laughs> Y'all go ahead and bang play <laughs> and get in this giveaway. So did you decide on which one is your favorite? Dimaki uh, or Welp Herder? Dimaki. Dimaki Exile. All right, that's what we're giving away on this little grubfish then. Oh, awesome. We have five entrants. So how stoked are you for the, uh, the SPS out of the brawls? And uh, what tier is your guild? Um, we're in tier three right now. We're working on tier four. Our arena is not upgraded. We were working on our store before our arena. Um, so we're just in tier three right now. We, we took... are also tier three, although some crazy guy just donated 29,500 DEC to max oh. out the arena. So um, all we need left is 58 crowns. So probably next week, or maybe the week after, um, we will be going into Tier 4, and I'm super excited about that. Oh, that on the awesome. mountain guy, uh, I'm glad that he's in our guild. <laughs> <laughs> that's you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're like 250,000 DECOA um, from upgrading our arena, so we'll probably be here in, in Tier 3 for a little bit longer, but... Um, we got we got first place in the last brawl, and I think we got 122 SPS. So. Oh dang! We got 15 each in our last battle, which is a lot better than I thought it was. For some reason, I thought we got like three, and I would still yeah. be happy with the three. But you know, 15 is definitely nice. But 125, that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't think we've ever actually come in first, uh, at least that I know of. Right now, we're in like third. Um, and part of the problem is probably me because, uh, like, right now I'm one and three with two to fight. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm terrible. I'm telling you, like, I can't play the game worth a crap. Crypto Ace, go ahead and drop your name in the chat for me, please. In the last two brawls, I went undefeated. And, oh, wow. Uh, nice. Congratulations. I was hoping to make it a third, but I just checked and saw that I lost one and I'm really bummed right now so i didn't make it three brawls in a row undefeated <laughs> all right looks like i have to go actually pick up a dumaki exile because i'm not sending you my uh leveled up gold one <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
chat for a second so I can, there we go. Nightbot just enter the giveaway. Yes, I have uh, I have Nightbot and Streamlabs both have timers to bang play because um, when I'm running Grubfish, I, I also have commands set up so that people in the chat can cause Nightbot and Streamlabs to Grubsplode. And oh, okay. if you okay. kill enough people in a Grubsplode, then there's a prize wheel for that, uh, and oh. also that it feeds the jackpot. So. Um, if you're in the chat, you can actually hit bang jackpot and it'll pull up four links that'll show you basically everything that is currently held by the jackpot account. And so anytime that Nightbot or Streamlabs win in Grubfish, the prize goes to the jackpot. And then whenever somebody doesn't claim their prize, the prize also goes to the jackpot. And so these have been building up for a long time. I did have a winner, I want to say back in like May, um, motor car hit a jackpot and he won there was a, a gold gargoyle lion in there and then there was like another 900 card power in there uh, but then nobody has touched it in the entire time since and I like I promised we were gonna do a jackpot giveaway uh, when on the stream when I hit a thousand followers and that happened a couple of weeks ago only it took there were three tries to give away the jackpot and I had one person didn't claim, and then I had uh, another one didn't claim, and then the third one won a Rising Star jackpot, because the jackpot wheel, you know, has different things to break down, and he doesn't play Rising Star, so he was like, just keep it and add it to the next jackpot. So now, you know, when I do the jackpot again, if somebody, you know, hits these, uh, you know, all Splinterland stuff, then they will get all of the Splinterland stuff and all of the Rising Star stuff. But in the meanwhile, it's still just building. <laughs> so what uh, other... Go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. What other games do you play? Or are you like Splinterlands Maxi? This is it. Um, I have a whole crap ton of Gala NFTs. Oh, nice. So um, we actually just bought another one today. They have a game that's coming out that's from the creators of Halo. Oh, I forget what it's Bungie? called. Um, what's it called? Let me find out. Uh, we bought a node for for that game. Nice. Uh, Last Last Expedition, it's called. Cool. So we have a bunch of Mirandus NFTs. Um, I think we have Fortitude NFTs, Spider Tanks. Mostly my husband plays these. Uh, Walking Dead Empires, which looks so amazing. I can't wait to play that one. Oh, is that uh, not out yet? I, I'd heard, been they hearing... had like They had a play test out, but I think that the play test is over. Okay. I had been hearing about a Walking Dead blockchain game, and yeah, I, I yeah. was pretty excited about that. Um, I just... Yeah. I, I know that like even with like crypto shots and whatnot like i have problems with my computer even streaming splinterlands i'm not going to be able to do those games on the equipment right. that i currently have right so um I, it's all good though I'm, I'm not really complaining i'm happy with what i got but that's kind of what's kept me out of gala games i really want to get involved though uh, but i also yeah. know that there, you know it's uh, a little bit more expensive to start out with than splinterlands is very much so. Their NFTs are rather pricey. Um, some of them we've bought like on the second secondary market at a little bit of a discount. Like a lot of our Miranda's NFTs, the buildings and stuff that we have, we, we bought, um, you know, when they were a little bit cheaper. Um, just sort of collecting them over time. So, you know, it's a, it's a big part of our portfolio, though. That I, I have a lot of faith in in Gala Games, and I think they have some pretty cool stuff going on, so. Yeah, that, that definitely, like, I have not seen anything out of Gala that does not look impressive, and so yeah. uh, also I've heard uh, a lot of really good things about the team and, and you know, uh, the, the ecosystem that they have going on, and yeah, it, it seems definitely uh, worth worthwhile. Yeah, for sure. 
So do you have uh, Lux and a Rooney? I do. I have nice. uh, three Roonies. Well, I have two and Baron has one. Sweet. So we have three collectively and um, three Lux Vegas. And how many accounts? <laughs> Um, I have a rental account, I have an alt account that I have a scholar playing on, I have my main account that I currently have a scholar playing on, um, I play on it too, but um, he's been mostly playing it, because I'm busy playing Valhalla God, which is Aggie's account. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little tiny bit jealous of you getting to play that, like I've <laughs> seen you opening the packs on there and whatnot, and it's just like... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a lot of fun. It's a little bit intimidating though, I guess. Like I feel like I have to do really well. Like I don't want to let Aggie down. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's like that added pressure, I guess. Um I mean I I do okay, but there's people who play much better than I do, and I know that he could at any time find someone who would play much better than me so i like i feel i feel kind of bad about it um but at the same time i mean you're you are you know one of the faces of the game so like you having access to that that account is is overall good for splinterlands i feel because i mean the pretty girl advantage is definitely not inapplicable but also you're an awesome person you're a very entertaining streamer and you do have a lot of knowledge about the game so you you know you deserve the audience that you have and then having the ability to go into any battle and be able to play any card and show off things that a lot of people aren't going to experience in their day-to-day -day playing because most people don't have those cards i think that that is really a, a good thing for the growth of the game so Personally, could he potentially make a little bit more profit off of having somebody else play it? Possibly, but would that actually be in his best interest overall? I think not. I mean, well, thank you. That's it's it, your your words are very sweet, and <laughs> I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to be sweet. I'm just being honest here. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm super glad that I got you on my stream because, like. The, the, yeah you, you're you know definitely one one of the the bigger names in the community and like i'm I, i'm a small oh, fry I'm, not just i'm in, not all that i'm depth, not all that <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm not all that i feel like a very small fish <laughs> and uh, that's probably a good thing like that's i think that's part of why you are there is because you're not like oh i'm i'm shit hot i'm the best thing that there is like that that attitude is going to turn off a lot of people and, and yeah. it definitely does and i feel like that's also part of you know why i have been able to grow as much as i have lately is because i'm not approaching it like that either like i know i'm right. not very good at this game i can teach pretty much anybody to be better than i am because that's really where my skill in any of this lies like i can teach you to be a better bowler than i am i can teach you to beat me at golf i can teach you to beat me at pool i can teach you to see yeah, see there you go crypto ace is the best Aww. see i mean you might it might be humble or humility or it might be you know an optics thing but no you i think you you really are one of the you know the the better known and and better uh, audienced people uh in, within this community and I, I think it's well deserved as well like it's not like oh it's just because you no not at all um like you're you're really good at what you do you are entertaining and uh eat like even if you start losing i i don't think i've ever seen you stop smiling once uh everybody has seen me rage once or twice uh, and i just you don't get that from you um, oh i definitely rage i definitely rage oh, okay. i just I just, just don't not really do it on the stream. <laughs> I don't. I don't really do it on stream very much. Like the one time I did was that time that Angry Chipmunk was on my stream, and he was beating me and oh, rubbing it in. Oh, whenever you got uh, town hauled. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna yeah. make you repeat it, but <laughs> but yeah, I do that's... remember that happening. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time I've gotten like really ragey, and. 
<laughs> I think angry chipmunk sometimes pushes me, pushes my buttons a little bit too much. And like, I love, I love banter. I love, you know, talking back and back and forth and teasing and all that. But sometimes he pushes my buttons a little bit too much and makes me rage. <laughs> right. And for me, it's, it's not, it's not the community that makes me rage. It's not even losing that makes me rage. Although that's usually like what it comes out at is losing. It, it's really like when things aren't working like sites not loading and whatnot like i'm constantly having problems with that and it's like oh, it's so frustrating to me and that that sets me off every time and i realize that it's like that that is my problem that is my computer being a potato and like but oh man you know i i get like that too i get like that with with technology when it's not working the way i want it to or if i can't figure out how to do something i get so frustrated and baron teases me about it because he's like he's in it and he's really really smart with computer stuff and and technology and stuff and i like he teases the crap out of me because i just get so frustrated and he just sits there and he laughs at me and i'm like what are you laughing at Stop at me. And that just makes it worse. Like yeah. you're not helping. <laughs> I realize exactly. that I'm irrational right now, but you saying that is not gonna fix it. <laughs> exactly. So so oh, how long you have, have you been? You have married? a rising star card too. I didn't know that you had a rising star card. I haven't played Rising Star in a while. Yes, uh, I uh, I got R two o six and uh, I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, awesome. Also working on some music that uh, I can hopefully get put into the game uh, before too long. Uh, working on some stuff for like my intros for YouTube and and everything as well. So, oh, cool! That's awesome. What? Uh, how how high up are you in Rising Star? I don't know. I haven't even logged in in a while. I started having problems with logging in. Um, let me see if I can get in now. It's risingstargame.com. Is that what it is? Yes. Um, I just had this issue where my where it wasn't loading with my keychain, and I just sort of stopped playing after that. But let me see. Oh, okay. No, no, it's still not letting me in. Why? That's a similar thing that I've been running into a lot with uh, a lot of everything on Hive lately. And so are you on Brave, I guess, is the first. Yeah. Okay, so, like, let me Oh, go there. To... It, just, it just loaded. It let me in. All right, cool. So I'm level 59. Nice. I am just about to be the reverse of that. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I, I haven't played in, like, a few months. I just so. can't believe how far down Starbits have gone. Like all I this have, talk, I haven't even paid attention. <laughs> all this talk about like getting DEC back to Peg and whatnot has really been getting my wheels kind of turning about how how can we get Starbits back to being valuable? Because when I bought my million Starbits to do the millionaire mission, it cost me hundred and forty dollars. Right. And like I was talking to Nguyen and you know, uh, he some of his family members got in and whatnot, and he's had people that are close to him that have spent like three hundred or uh, four fifty on theirs, and yeah. now my million star bits is worth thirteen dollars. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, it's it's ridiculous how far down it's gone, and I'm sure some of that is bear market pressure but that's not all bear market pressure i mean that's yeah like we're literally i've got a million twenty one thousand five hundred and twenty currently on hive engine and it's 1372 so wow. we're looking at 95 percent drop almost like somewhere between 90 and 95 and yeah it's like on the one hand i'm gonna keep playing because i i love I, I love the game and I love what Jux has done and like the fact that oh yeah I can actually hop in a diary right now that's right uh, and the fact that you know he's got me so where I can you know go in the diary and whatnot a lot of my viewership does come from Rising Star by way of the diary and uh, that's you know been super helpful and the game is really cool I, I think that the way it's been set up is awesome and there's some moments that are just absolutely hilarious especially when I start talking to mu musician friends and telling them about it. Like, 
the way that things go is it's very well put together but yeah, yeah the economy side of things is like terrible I, I, yeah but at the same time, like, if you wanted to get into it, now's the point. Because you can still buy a pack for 10,000 star bits or 12 packs for 100,000 star bits. And right. 100,000 star bits is like a buck 20. Right. So, <laughs> I mean, now now is the time to really, really max your stuff out. Unfortunately, I can't really take advantage of that. Just like I can't take much advantage of the, mm -hmm. the cost of the Splinterlands cards being so low. And the crazy right. thing is, is, while the packs are so far down... And the star bits are so far down, like the uh, the cards themselves in terms of star bit price are just skyrocketing. Like I was looking at bulk fans today, and I remember when bulk fans were you know under fifty, and like it was a major thing when bulk fans actually hit fifty SPS per fan, and now they're at like sixty five. So yeah. and uh, of course a big part of that is how far star bits is going down. Um, but also, like, that, that's making it a lot more difficult to kind of take what you're earning and put it back in and actually grow. But right. I, I basically, um, every month uh, on the first of the month, I buy a 12-pack and of the packs and then I'll open those, and that's pretty much all I do. Every once in a yeah. while throughout the, you know, I'll, I'll go and pick up some bulk fans or something like that, keep my eyes on the prices. But it's, it's been a lot slower lately. And then yeah. since going full-time uh, content, because uh, my job has uh, decided to, well, over the last, like, five weeks, they cut my hours from five days a week down to zero. So it was my like, gosh. okay, well, um, oh, hey, I'm actually in now. Yay. I just had to reload Genesis League Sports like six times, but I finally got back in, so yay, that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. I need to clean my rewards, too. I haven't right. done that all day. I, I was I intending to just leave it and, and do it on my mainstream, so I do all of my faucet stuff every night at about the same time, like starting out my stream, but with the problems I've been having getting in, I'm not going to take that chance. I'm just going to go ahead and claim everything now. And so what are you doing with yours? Are you restaking? Are you pulling all of the value out? Are you doing half and half? Anything like that? Um, so I bought a whole bunch of, of GLX um, like shortly before the staking started. So I got it fairly cheap. Um, so a lot of my rewards, at first I was just staking it, but a lot of it I pulled out and sold to get some of my cost back that I had put into it. So I, I then, you know, bought Rift Watcher packs and opened those. Fair enough. Um, uh, Bushwhack, Bar I don't know Baron anything so. about pack staking. Um, I, I've heard that it is coming, but uh, I can't give you any further information, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about it either. Um, I've heard soon, but, you know. <laughs> um, At least it's not Blizzard soon, TM. <laughs> Um, so yeah, now I'm just staking it. Now that the price is down, I'm just restaking everything and raking in the, the crazy APR for the moment. So I have about just under 12,000 GLX right now. Oh, wow. Nice. I have, uh, 30. <laughs> Cause <laughs> I, I have not bought any and I don't intend to buy any. Like I said from the get go, like with, with everything that was coming out all at the same time, it was like, it's not that I'm not interested in GLS. It's that there's too much stuff going on right now and I can't put anything in to it. So, yeah. uh, this, uh, basically the whole time I've just been, I, every day I take half and I put it in the stake and then I sell the other half and I put that into SPS and stake it. Same thing I'm doing with uh, Wrestling Org Online. Are you involved with them at all? No, not. Wu has actually been like my best performer over the last couple of months. Um, they had a general sale for their last 30,000 alpha packs that happened on Halloween. And so a couple of days before then, I went ahead and I put in 200 into Woo because there were going to be $2 a pack um, based on the price of Woo. And so I bought, you know, the 100,000 packs or the uh, 100,000 Woo uh, to be able to get uh, the packs and then 
by the time that the uh, the sale actually happened, Wu had appreciated enough that instead of being a thousand per pack, it was like uh, 984 per pack. So I was able to get 11 T1 packs, and so I did that because um, they with Wu. Actually, let me go to Wu. You uh, you get airdrops every day uh, based on the packs that you have, just like with with the SPS airdrop and whatnot. But uh, I I've had taken a look at it months ago and had kind of decided similar with GLS like okay it's interesting it looks cool I'm intrigued but I don't really have the ability to you know put in anything new right now and then I won a Twitter giveaway that was two alpha packs two raven packs and two Saturn packs and so once I got them and I started seeing here on the airdrop page that I was just earning woo every day for free just for having those packs I was like okay that's awesome so now I'm more intrigued and so I did buy a couple more of the Saturn packs a couple more of the Raven packs while I was waiting and then when that uh, the general sale happened I was there I was ready I was waiting and it sold out in 99 seconds which I oh, thought wow. was an interesting uh, since you know Rift Watchers was also 99 seconds but uh, yeah. Of course, 30,000 packs versus 500,000 packs is a significant difference. Um, yeah. But so I got those, uh, I got, and it was limited to 100 at a time. So I did the 100, and then I still had enough left for 11. So I got in again and was able to get that one through before they sold out. And then that was the thing that was different about the two is that with Rift Watchers, since there wasn't any way that like the sales was not cut off when the pre sale ended like that was why i you know if i had known that i was out of the pre-sale period then i wouldn't have bought the 50 rift watchers packs i would have put that elsewhere like i would have gotten a node because i've been wanting a node for a long time too and i would have put that towards that instead right. um but you know that's neither here nor there uh so i started getting these uh daily airdrop rewards and then i got that uh the 11 t1 packs and then three days after i got those packs then all of a sudden i got airdropped one woo rewards pack per uh alpha pack that i bought so all of a sudden i'm sitting on 11 t1 alpha packs and 11 t1 rewards packs now here's where it gets really cool i immediately turned around and i sold 55 of those rewards packs for 175 dollars Oh, wow. So I'm now in for $25, and I've still got half of my rewards packs and all of my alpha packs. And then I've, I've over since then, I've pulled about another $500 worth out of Woo by selling the alpha packs when I, I needed to you know secure some capital um, as, uh, and the rewards packs as well. And so I just went ahead and um, put all... Uh, you know, took all that profit out, but I'm still earning uh, every day just a little bit, 12 and a half woo. Uh, and this will just go, unlike the SPS, like staking and whatnot, this will actually go up over time because this is based on the pool of packs that are available. And so every time one gets opened, the rewards on the rest of the packs goes up. Right. And then it gets even crazier because I have opened a couple of packs. I have a few cards and when I, uh, I put these cards in the mining pool, so every hour there's like a lottery that you can win based on the number of cards that you have staked into the mining pool to earn more woo. And then over uh, last week, they released the airdrop card from the alpha packs. And so you one was guaranteed at 100, but I got two copies of Sunny Onu and then ever since staking him in here i hadn't won any of the lotteries before but i've won nine times over the past uh five days uh since, wow. uh, since staking him and that was another three thousand woo and so basically what i'm just doing is i have some hive power delegated to them and so i'm getting woo and hive power off of that i'm getting woo from my staked woo and from the the daily air airdrops so and i'm doing the same thing here that i am with glx like half of it goes back into staking woo half of it goes into sps 
and then get staked as SPF. So it's, it's just basically everything is feeding itself. And I'm so much happier with that than, you know, just owning a whole bunch of cards and losing continuously with them and raging at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> So what what is your uh, your favorite aspect of Splinterlands versus some of the other games, or least favorite? Like, where do you feel is the the best? Um, like, what what are the strengths of, of Splinterlands, and is this your favorite game, or are, are some of the others starting to to get some more of your attention, or or how do you feel about all of that? Splinterlands is hands down my favorite game. Um, the but the best part, like the the gold of Splinterlands is the community. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the friends I've made, um, many of whom I've met in person now after Splinterfest. Um, I mean, there's there's nothing like it. These these wonderful people that I've met have become like family. Um, that's that's the gold of Splinterlands. Yeah, that's, that's the, the biggest asset that the game has is the community. This is, is definitely true, and that's kind of, you know, why I, I see some of the things that uh, have been going on as, you know, more positive than uh, initially appear, and some as more negative than initially appear, because there's, uh, like, that is absolutely the strength of the game is the community, and that's true for any game, um, but especially, you know, anything that's on the, on the blockchain and whatnot, like has a functioning economy that is part of the game and honestly is you know a major part of the game uh it, it requires you know people to participate so um it's one of the the big things i've been covering lately is especially like with the whole layoff thing i know a lot of people have uh, uh you know kind of liquidated their assets and left and like because I sold mine right before that happened, like literally earlier that same day. Um, you know, people have been like, "Oh, you just you sold out. You're quitting, you're quitting the game." It's like, no, I'm I'm not going anywhere. I'm still streaming every night. I'm still on Splinterlands TV. I'm still playing the game. I was just reallocating assets, but since so many people did kind of leave and whatnot, yeah. I've been really kind of trying to draw a lot of focus to the fact that look, it's not just splinterlands if you look at even you know the top 20 com uh, companies in the tech sector within the last month you're looking at over 65,000 layoffs like yeah. what happened at splinterlands it sucks it's a terrible especially for the people that lost their jobs i'm not trying to you know say that it's not a bad thing for but sure. it's not the end of the world it is a company making prudent and necessary decisions and in all honesty I would be far more worried if they had come out saying, well, this is what we have realized, but we decided not to do it. Yeah, they did the right thing. Exactly. They didn't bury their heads in the sand. They did the right thing, planning yeah. for the future. They have every intention of trying to hire these people back when you know everything in the economy is more stable. But this is going to give them focus. They have a set timeline now. They have... They have a smaller team they will be able to focus on what needs to be done focus on the core and the game is going to be better for it yeah I'm here absolutely. For and I, so, like like Aggie was saying like you gotta shoot your shot like did did we hire too many people yeah possibly well obviously not possibly yes we did but we were in a position where we were able to grow and so we did we pushed out and yeah we pushed a little too far but that's because you have to be ready for things to go right because right. otherwise they can't like so i i you know all the respect for for matt and aggie with oh for um, sure with that and i feel you know, like they, they made mistakes but they're correcting the mistakes they're you know they're guiding the ship back onto the correct course you know they overhired they they did they overextended themselves they've said that, that it was a mistake you know um they everybody knew a bear market was coming because bear markets follow bull markets that's how it is yeah. um so they they overextended they made a mistake but 
I have so much respect for them because they own their mistakes, they fix their mistakes, and they're completely transparent with us. They're so much more transparent than any company I've ever encountered. Yeah, absolutely. Like the fact that we have a weekly town hall and okay, so it's not every week. We didn't have one, you know, before the layoffs and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. You it's know, most, it's the exactly. vast majority of weeks. It, it, it's 50 weeks a year. So you're missing two. Like that, that's still, that, that you're not getting 50 a, a year from anybody else. And no. just the depth that they go into in the town halls either. It's not just a, you know, a little, you know, okay, blurb about what we're doing or what's going on next week or anything like that. Like they're talking about in-depth plans. They're even talking about stuff that might not actually happen. I mean, how right. many ideas have been put forth in town halls that never actually made it into the game and may may be in the future or may not we we don't know but like that you know it's it's a part of everything that they do is you know being brought to us by by the town hall and you know through discord and map chat and everything like that like there's so much information that we have from the team and the people that are in charge of this great game and right. it's uh it's definitely you know inspires a lot of confidence in what the future could hold for sure and for sure. yeah like crypto a says uh if matt and Aggie weren't here i would probably be gone yeah like i i love this game but it's it really a lot of it is I, I love the team that is in charge of the game because yeah do they make mistakes of course they're human just like we all are we all make mistakes but when they do they are quick to own it step up and try and fix it and yep, i feel exactly. like that is that's everything i have a lot of respect for the team a lot of respect who's your favorite tank oh um shield bearer probably he's definitely a strong option i don't desert dragon though desert, <laughs> I, desert dragon is a monster especially at max level with the piercing and giant killer and trample it's just absolutely ridiculous I, I am uh, also, you know, having just been able to start playing with him because I never pulled one, but I do have one rented currently. Uh, Coral Lurker is also really yeah. up there for me, especially yeah, under one. Kitty or Aquatus. You know, I never use Aquatus. It's too RNG for me. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I mean, that that's definitely uh, a valid point. I, I feel like the... Uh, the thing about him is like if you are going to be leaning into that kind of play style anyways uh it's it's a really uh solid card like again it, it was actually the one that i was most excited about when you know rift watch was, was being spoiled because um i was already like heavy into blue especially with phantom of the abyss and oceanus like i was already playing that you can't touch me style of game and then getting a damage on top of it um but then you know i saw the prices on dallin also and i saw how much everyone was sleeping on him and i was like all right well i think that's going to be my first ever max summoner so i did i maxed out dallin and i started using him all the time and I still feel like the community is sleeping on Dallin big time. I, I agree with you. I like Dallin a lot. I use I use it quite a bit. Especially in like up armored matches where you know that you're going to be hitting armor, yet you can still deal damage because you're just that cool. Like I, I kind of like him in um, poison full sets because you're lowering their health, their max health. So if they're trying to heal, you know, it, it can be really good against like Llama. Yeah, anytime you're expecting a heal, he's definitely yeah. awesome. Um, I actually have not had the opportunity to play Dallin against a Lamacron yet. Like, I, I don't face Lamacron all that much anymore, thankfully. Neither <laughs> do I. Neither do I. I don't see it very often anymore. 
And I think it's just being priced out of a lot of people's range that aren't in Diamond Champion, although you're up in Diamond Champion, I'm, so... I'm in Diamond and Champion, but nobody plays Llama Karn anymore. I hardly ever see it. That, but well, I'm, also, I, I'm also in, mostly in Wild, so I don't know. That might have something to do with it. Yeah, um, maybe, because I was also like uh, in, in Wild uh, up until this season. Um, Mostly because I didn't want to give up my chicken. <laughs> I love chicken, and I don't know how to play without chicken. And, like, I, I do have a couple of alpha cards. I thought that was hilarious when Neil was talking about nobody buys alpha cards, and immediately you were like, I buy alpha cards, because I was about to type in, I buy alpha cards. Uh, I don't buy many. I don't have very much, but, like, no, I, I learned my lesson from Magic the Gathering. Like, uh, alpha is important. And it's yeah. never going to not be important. Um, right. And then, and then beta neutrals. A lot of people don't really think about the fact that there was no neutral in alpha. So beta right. neutrals are basically alphas. They don't have the same kind of bonus structure that alpha does. Right. Although now beta has its own bonus structure. So it's not as good, but it's still there. Uh, right. But it's just like with the gold cards. Like, I realized very early on, anytime you can have a card that is going to give you additional rewards every time you earn rewards with it, that card is literally going to pay for itself just in the bonuses and then be all profit from there. And so that's why, like, I, I was doing gold-only brawls up until this season um, because, I yeah, I was just building everything was gold. Yeah. And now it's like, I, I've still got a lot of them and I'm still very happy about gold cards and, and whatnot. Not being able to play my alphas is like, meh, but at the same time, okay, so they're they're on the rental account just getting rented out. And even if people are, you know, just renting them for power, then it, uh, you know, it's still a little bit of income and I'm, I'm definitely not upset about a thousand EC a day. Yeah, for sure. And that's covering most of my rentals. What are my rentals actually at right now? My cards and rented. Rented, yes and no. Oh, I'm currently only at uh, 635 VEC a day. Well, that's not too bad. That's way less than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also I'm renting a lot of level ones and twos right now because I am still down in bronze. Like the the intention is to get up to renting all max everything because I do want to be up into diamond. Um, but yeah, I just the last two seasons I actually managed to finish gold one, but like just barely. Like get into gold one and then stop battling <laughs> yeah. just so that i'm you know starting the next season silver one rather than having to fight all the way up through season through silver again that that was kind of the, the the point that i was getting to on that and for sure i like it. it 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 was very nice and it's like now fighting back through novice and bronze again it, it reminded me why I was so happy when I hit gold three in the first place because it was like, all right, now I never have to be in bronze again because every yeah. season I will reset down to silver and yeah. not <laughs> bronze. Bronze is terrible. It is the worst. Oh, my word. Yeah, bronze sucks. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. It's the worst part of the game. And to hit new players with that first, like, that, yeah. I, I Yeah. For sure. All right. Nearly only 19. How are you liking Lux Vega? Um, honestly... I'm I'm not as impressed as I hoped. I, I still think she's really cool and whatnot, but um, yeah, I, I I will like her a lot better once I'm higher level. I'm I'm sure because that's where the whole her being max level 
actually matters so far i've not been able to take advantage of that because i'm right. in so um i love her skill set i think that you know that is it's definitely an awesome little toolkit and it is going to be super helpful in the long run um but yeah as far as lux in bronze is rough because i mean the mana pools are just so low anyways that i mean you basically a lot of times i'm using you know 20 30 50 percent uh okay not f quite 50 but 20 30 40 percent of of my mana just on the summoner and it's like right. you know the the jump from three to four was not great but at least it, you know it but from four to five in in novice and bronze really hurts and once you get into silver gold you start getting more of the 20 plus matches then i feel like she's gonna be um a little more usable but yeah it i think i i did like 30 matches with just lux vega um and out of those 30 i think i won like eight yeah um and of course part of that was my own stupidity as well because i had a death quest so all i rented was death and so it was you know lux death every match and so i'm sure i became very easy to counter uh even though i was you know kind of switching up the the uh, strategies within death because thankfully that is an option but uh, right. uh i was also like i was why you gotta give me death for my first quest like it's still my worst splinter um yeah even, even though I got down and, and started playing death a lot more, like I still have a lot less experience with death than with the others because I always kind of hated it. Uh, for the longest time, it was like life and death are, I'm just worthless with. And then once I got uh, Grandmaster Wraith um, and uh, picked up the Adelaide and, and started really working on life, it actually became one of my favorites. I started playing it a lot. Um, but I still, you know, death was really kind of my, my weak spot. And then building that Dallin helped, uh, especially once I picked up the Lyra and, um, cause also I didn't have really any of the legendaries for it. Um, I picked up a Gorlodon once I started, uh, actually playing death a little bit. Cause I was like, I, I just love having that three reach damage and now i feel like one of the the strengths of death is also one of its weaknesses because like they've got such a great selection of reach monsters but you can only use one effectively which one is that <laughs> no, which I one mean, is that no i i mean you've you've got a great selection but at any given oh, time oh, oh, you can only okay. use one <laughs> okay like, got it because he, he just gets that second position so it's like yeah. it, it's it's i mean gorlodon arachne thug um uh, yeah. no not stitch leech uh what the heck is his name the four mana guy shadow snitch shadow snitch yeah i like all three of those are are great and then who was it that uh rift watcher guy Chaos Legion has a really good one also. No, that was this. Uh, yeah, there is a fourth. I just I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. That's an awesome reach monster. Arachne. Gorlodon. Anyway, yeah, that, that that's I feel like um, the reach and the tanks. That's where death does best. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, after that, it's kind of like, okay, um, there's some cool stuff. I really love how much magic life leech they have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like in in gladius brawls using the witch of warwick with uh the nari bonesmith and the life Zapper and ancient lich if i have the the mana yeah yeah that that seems like a ridiculous team there especially if you have a uh, equalizer match something like oh, yeah. that where they're starting out yep 
The Lux made death much better. I, I could absolutely see that, because we were talking earlier, because um, I, I took over No Empathy stream again today uh, for Splinterlands TV. And uh, yeah, we were talking about 14 mana, Lux, Windeku, or no, it was, uh, yeah, it was Lux, Windeku, and uh, Scavo Hireling. Like, that's 14 mana, and you have a self-healing tank and a repair, and normally the repair wouldn't work with Windeku, and no Death Summoner will give it the armor, but Lux will. And then you also have that additional HP, so if you have the mana and the ability to bring in any strength in, then all of a sudden that heal is also giving you four instead of three, Plus, oh man, he's such a good tank in that circumstance. Although, doesn't have the taunt. But then, also, like, Night Ghoul. First thing that I did when Rift Watchers came out was, uh, after I opened all those packs, I, uh, I sold all of the summoners. And I went ahead and picked up Night Ghoul and started leveling him up in gold. Because he's just such a beast. And especially, yeah. like, you put Windeku in the front, and then uh, Night Ghoul in position six, like the only damage your Windeku is going to be taking is melee. So he's guaranteed to be hitting those thorns. And then by the time the Night Ghoul dies, your Windeku is still going to be at full health. And the thorns alone will have probably taken out their front line. Right. Hey, I need to play with that card a little bit more. I haven't played with him as much as I should. Night Ghoul? Yeah, he's he's definitely a beast. Uh, I mean, it does kind of suck that we uh, you can't uh, attack with him from the sixth position. Like, that's, my favorite taunter is still my Celic Slip Spawn, just because of the fact that he can attack from that last position. And then, like, so, like, I think the best lineup that I've really ever come up with and yeah it is weak to the correct counters but uh my Selic infantry up front again because you know the only damage that you're taking is melee so you're gonna get that you know cut in half and then you can put two healers on him two triage on the slip spawn put the slip spawn on the back line and it's just like you're not doing any damage to anything that is actually gonna stick right yeah that sounds Pretty mean. Uh, oh, downtown detail has joined us. He's trying to get Chowabunga to raid. Cool. Uh, I'm I'm pretty good myself. Uh, super happy to to have a uh, a guest for uh, hashtag uh, special guest week, and uh, we are announcing a tournament that I'm going to be running. Oh yeah, I still need to set that up. I've been all playing games and talking and whatnot and not <laughs> getting the event going. Um, what do I think about the new Soulbound reward cards? I'm kind of six of one, half a dozen on the other on that one. I see good arguments on both sides. Uh, what do you think about it, Lutheen? I don't know how I think about that yet. Um, I haven't given it enough thought to formulate an opinion at the moment. So I'm going to reserve judgment. I want to hear what some other people have to say about it. Um, yeah, I just don't know how I feel about it. You know, we have the um, card level thing now on uh, ranked battles, where if your card's not leveled up for your league, you, you don't get as many archers, right? Yeah. So when when the new reward cards come out, you won't really be able to use them without hurting your archers. Exactly. That's, that, that's my primary argument against them as well. Especially for common cards. They take 400 for common cards to level up. You know how long that's going to take? <laughs> yeah, for days. And I don't mean four yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, they're essentially going to be useless at first, you know? And I mean, the argument against that is like, well, if everyone's using the cards at the same level, then it, it's hitting but nobody's everybody. Gonna, nobody's going to be using the card. That's and the problem. Yeah, like that argument plays for things like, um, like chicken, where you really don't need to level it up. I mean, I got a level one ch uh, single BCX chicken and I got a level three chicken, primarily so that I can play chicken 
in melee only, and I can play chicken in no melee. Like, that, right. that is the only reason why I have a leveled up chicken at all, is so that I can play it regardless of rule set. But, right. like, the fiends, you don't even have that. Like, it's they've all got the melee attack anyway, so there is no level differential to be able to play it in no melee. Um, but then, obviously, you know, at the highest levels, Diamond Champion, you get, you know, great rewards for leveling them up to max, but there's just no point in having a level 2 or 3 if you're in silver or gold. Yeah. And so that does mean that, you know, everybody that you're playing against is also going to be playing level 1 of that card, and therefore everybody kind of gets hit the same, and it therefore doesn't really decrease your rewards. Only it still does, because there's also the people that don't have those cards and therefore yeah. they're not losing their rewards and of course it does always come down to well if you don't win the battle then you don't get rewards anyways so like it is you know a balancing act of is it worth taking the loss on the rewards in order to get rewards and sometimes that answer is going to be yes sometimes that answer is going to be no but yeah, when it comes to the, the brand new reward cards, it means that you have an active disincentive from playing your incentive for playing. Yeah. Like yeah. it just, it's, it's asinine to me. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't really, it does not compute. But yeah. at the same time, like I understand where they're coming from with, well, it, it kind of beats having all of these uh, reward cards being almost worthless like you can literally buy them for one percent above burn rate but you know what that is actually part of improving the new player experience is having those cheap cards and we all know that they're not going to be there forever because the print run on these cards is almost complete like we're over 80 percent on all of the commons and rare reward cards so we're getting to the point where they're not going to be available anymore and then they are going to start going up in value and I don't think anybody really minds being able to buy a max level Oshana's for just over 20 bucks right now like yeah. I, and that was actually the, the very first max level card that I owned <laughs> was oh really? yeah I, I had gotten my Kelia up to level 5 so I could play the level 3 and so I was shopping around to, to get a couple more copies to level mine up to three. And then I realized I had to go through seven pages of max level Oshanas to find a single BCX. Oh my gosh. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and buy the max level Oshanas and send the rest of my copy over to the rental account. And that's exactly what I did, even though yeah. I knew it's going to be forever before I can actually use him at max level. I don't care. Now I've got it. And then, you know, I did the same thing with uh, all of the, uh, the common reward cards in gold are all max leveled. And I don't actually think any of those even sold. So I think all of that is still over on Rickwins again. And then uh, I did Jin Vilkia and Jin Renova as well. Like I've got max levels of all of those, even though I can't use them because these things are about to be out of print. They're about to go up in price. So might as well max cards that you know you love and want to use in the future now while you can, even if it's you know something that you're not getting any super benefit out of immediately, it's still gonna help you out long-term and it's not like it's wasted, you know? Right, right, for sure. For sure. Especially when you're getting that much of a discount for buying the combined cards. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times it's, you know, it's better just to get them maxed out. And I think that's kind of how I'm, I'm going to be approaching things going forward too. Is like up to till the point where I sold all my cards, mostly I would just buy, you know, singles just because I didn't have, you know, as much to put in but now it's like you know i'd rather just save up for a little bit and then buy the cheaper max level and i'll just do without it until then because right. again even if i'm not up in diamond champion like that way i've got it and i know i don't have to worry about it anymore yeah. um there are certain cards that of course will uh will not get that tr treatment like you know phantom of the abyss i'm not gonna max that card he's just too expensive yeah, he's um, expensive as much as i would love to 
I, I don't even think I'm going to take him to level two. I want to. That demoralize would be amazing. But, like, it's... That's, what, another hundred... Well, now it's about a hundred bucks. Uh, when I yeah. bought him, he was 70. So, it's like... That, that'd that be another 140. And that's, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of those older cards, untamed cards, they're so expensive. Yeah, and it's it's crazy too because they're really not all that old. Like, I mean, yes, they're they're of course older than what's out now, but like comparing the difference between Untamed and Chaos Legion versus Untamed and Alpha, like you would think the gap would be bigger from Alpha to Untamed than yeah. it is from Untamed to Chaos, but I I find that it's actually reverse in a lot of cases. I mean, obviously, you know, some of the lesser played cards, not so much, be just because the, you know, while there's lesser demand, there's so much less supply of the alphas. Um, right. And then find it, I've, I've found alphas and betas of the same card at the same price. Like, how does that even happen? I don't know. Or, or I like, don't know. You know, five, ten percent difference. Like, why would you, why would you ever not get the alpha there? <laughs> I just, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, me neither. But yeah, it, it, crypto is going to be hard to get a max card. Yeah, with with those soulbound reward cards. Uh, now, I have at the same time like I, I heard it put forth from the community, but I hadn't heard anything from the team about it until uh, Matt mentioned it earlier that uh, you know uh, um, potentially increasing like in gold diamond champion the number of common cards that you're getting just like they did with the potions and whatnot and at first i was against that like i feel like it with the way things are currently set up that would be uh, really bad but if they're going to be soul bound then it makes a lot more sense like if yeah you... if they're if they're soul bound it makes more sense i just think we don't need more inflation of of the number of cards right now there's already so many cards and um you know the market's kind of saturated at the moment so yeah exactly so adding that in with the current state i i would definitely be against if and here's the thing is i feel like if these are two separate proposals there's an opportunity there for things to go seriously awry i think that the way to do it would be one proposal that includes we're going to make rewards cards soul bound, but we're going to give you more of them based on your league. Right. And obviously, like, I don't think that should apply to legendaries. I don't think you should be pulling two legendaries out of one chest. Oh, but for, sure. um, for, for commons and rares, I could, I could see it. Uh, and even like, okay, you get two copies of Epic if that's what you pull and you're in champion. I could see right. that. Legendary should definitely be one per, because you already have a significantly increased chance of getting a legendary over the lower leagues. Getting multiples would just be ridiculous. Right. Dr. Blight is cheaper to rent in gold than regular. What? Are we talking max level? Are we talking single BCX? Because I'm going to take a look at this. Not that I don't believe you, but I got to see that with my own eyes. Okay, 16.42. Oh, yeah, you need to look at the max level. Oh, level two, okay. 350 for max. <laughs> there is not a max gold Dr. Blight available for rent. I'm actually not surprised by that. Yeah, there's so few of them. Here we go. 
Okay, uh, level 2 Dr. Blight 15.76, level 2 Gold Dr. Blight 16.42, so not quite um, cheaper, but basically the same price. I mean, that's, that's nuts. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Market's funny sometimes. Do you do monster flipping and, and whatnot like that, or are you just a straight player? And when you buy monster or buy cards there for for you to hold, do you sell anything? I what, just I do some flipping sometimes. Um, sometimes I open packs and sell the cards. Sometimes I buy cards that are cheap and then sell them for more, um, and then use that money to upgrade the cards I really want. Um, Sometimes I just buy cards and rent them out. So it's a wide variety. Yeah, I have, I've done a little bit of buying to rent out. Um, although mostly I, I do that and then it's like I'm buying cards. It's like the first time I looked on, uh, on Splex at their, you know, best ROI for buying cards to rent out. The card that I found was Gremlin Blaster. And I love Blast. It's probably my favorite ability so having another cheap uh blast monster that i could run in my fire all blast team like i, I totally bought a copy with no intention of renting it out ever because <laughs> it was like okay uh yeah no we're, we're gonna do that because like i i've definitely put together the team of uh exploding right especially with <laughs> uh, with bright and bloom run exploding rats and exploding dwarf and gremlin blaster and fire elemental and pyromancer and uh scavo technomancer like a lot of six blast. blast monsters in a in a melee from anywhere rule set just so much fun and especially when your opponent is playing a bunch of melee because it's melee from anywhere and you've got that six speed flying exploding rats in the front line like yeah you're sacrificing some damage by not playing tarsa but i've literally seen my exploding rats when they fly dodge like 17 attacks in a row <laughs> <It's Yeah>. insane <laughs> of course if they bring any magic you're completely screwed because well it's gonna hit and uh, they're gonna die because they got no <laughs> hp it, it's very much glass cannon play but when it works it is the most fun <laughs> I bet. and then the really crazy thing is like with the exploding rats I, i've got it at level five i got the redemption i have never played exploding rats with the redemption because my tarsa is not high enough level <laughs> gotta level up those summoners <laughs> yeah and that's why i went the lux route it's like okay well we got we got that and then we can take care of it because and i think that was a uh, like also a, a big part of like what was because i was all gold on the summoners too and that was right. the big thing that was keeping me out of leveling everything up to get into diamond is because like and yeah and now you know prices are reasonable but like when i started with that the the day that Chaos Legion dropped, like I had already decided I'm going all gold summoners and, and from the spoilers I knew, okay, Obsidian is the one I want to focus on because I have a really strong earth deck and it's already all magic. So right. Obsidian is definitely what we're doing. And so day one, I paid 80 bucks for a gold Obsidian and oh I God. don't regret it. Oh my gosh, that's so much. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, no, it, it was so much. And then, like, the next day, I, I had my fiancé open in some packs for me, and I told her, even though I already have the card that I told you was the most important out of this set that we're going to get, you're still going to pull me one. And then in her third pack that she opened, she pulled Grund and Gold Obsidian, and I was like, ah! Nice. <laughs> awesome. I was so stoked. And so, yeah, I, but I got all of them... All five of the uh, the regular summoners from Chaos Legion uh, are level four, and then Kelia and Obsidian are level five, but all in gold. And so that that was the big part that was like, okay, to push forward now, 
even with the prices being as far down as they are, that's still ridiculously expensive to try yeah. and level up the, the summoners in gold. Yeah. And actually, let's take a look here. This is so much smaller. I had gotten up to the point where, uh, like, before I sold everything out and whatnot, my gold-only owned page was uh, 125 cards. Oh, and wow. obviously none of them max level or anything like that, but, like, yeah, it was, I was stoked. And it, even if I go to, let's check... Gold. Working, working, working. Let's get to working. So did not click modern. I clicked gold. Oh, I guess I can't select them all just to see how many it is. But yeah, we've, we've got a, a decent little collection here. And some things that are starting to get some decent levels on them. Nice. Why is that even rented? And yeah, that's that's what I'm I'm happiest about is getting all of those pelicors up to. I like love level the pelicors. Right. I think all of the pelicors are so good. All of them. And honestly, like I just started using Venari Heatsmith. <laughs> it took me a long time. To warm up to that card but uh i've just started using him and even even he's pretty good what what still gets me though is why in the hell do we have four common pelicors four rare venaris one common venari i have no idea <laughs> like that just made no sense to me i noticed that very early on and i, and I was like what the heck is going on here like that the... i never noticed that <laughs> yeah, the the uh, all of the common reward cards are Pelicor, except for the red one. The red one is the Venari Heatsmith, and then all of the rare reward cards are Venari, except for the red one, which is the Exploding Rats. Yeah. So, like, I understand, you know, the differential between, you know, the reward cards and then whatever's in the set... There's some differences there. Yeah, I get that. But just in the reward cards, like, why are your sets so off like that? What is wrong with red that, and I'm, no, I'm not saying that, you know, Exploding Rats should be there or that Venari Heatsmith should be a rare. I, I feel like Venari Heatsmith at rare would be trash. But, uh, like, yeah, yeah that, that's so strange to me how it just doesn't line up at all. Yeah, yeah, that is weird. That, the, oh, that's because we're only looking at gold. It was like, that doesn't sound right. So what has been your best uh, end of season rewards? I'm, I'm intrigued uh, from someone who actually like is in the higher leagues and and does well. <laughs> I don't usually get that great of rewards. I have gotten a gold foil Zanash, and then like two nice. days later, I got a gold foil Kinjo. Oh, nice! But those are, those are the only two gold foil legendaries I think I've ever pulled. I, I have never pulled a gold foil legendary. I have a gold foil Adelaide because when I was putting together that life team, it was like. I pulled an Adelaide, and I was like, oh, she's awesome. Okay, that, that repair is super helpful. And then when I saw there's a resurrection at level two, I was like, ooh, ooh, we need that resurrection. And so then it was like, okay, well, 
I can get a couple other copies. I was working on a trade with Encrypted to try and get his Adelaide off of him, and then it, he just kept not getting back to me on it. So I was like, all right, forget it. I'm just going to do it. And so I, I was like, let me put my Mylor on the market, and I'm going to try and sell him so that I can turn that into a gold Adelaide. And then he just didn't sell. And so I was like, you know what, forget it. I just bought the gold Adelaide. So I do have one gold foil legendary, but I've still never pulled one. And I think in total I've pulled, I got one Kinjo. I got uh, two Bilkia. I got... two Mortius and a raw and like that's all the legendaries that I've ever pulled really yeah I've been here for like a year and a half wow yeah like that's what I'm saying like my luck is just terrible I don't get not although then I get random stupid things like I finally pulled a Quora and out of my next three Gladius packs I pulled three more Quoras what? When I pulled my first Quora, I pulled three more back to back to back. And so now I have a level two Quora and I've never been able to play her because I was always playing gold only brawls. And then this time around, I was in regular brawls, so I was able to use her. And uh, I kind of forgot about that fact and didn't play green for the first couple of matches. Then I remembered on the fourth match because Quora was banned and I was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be playing Quora. And I was like, well, it doesn't matter that she's banned here because green isn't available anyways. And then on um, the next two matches, I didn't have enough mana to be able to play her. So I still never played Korra. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I love Korra. Such uh, a good card. Yeah, she's definitely a beast. Like, there, yeah. there's no denying that she's a beast. Especially, like, Korra plus Flore. Oh, man, that's going to be insane. Yeah. And then, like... I'm still, like, dreaming of the team. Like, I was kind of thinking about putting it together. Like, okay, so you could do Grund, Carnage Titan, Quora, Flore, Vigil... Like, there's just... And now it's getting to the point where you could even... Even if we had eight monsters on a team, you could actually fill it out with eight monsters that are hitting twice per round. You also got, uh, what is it, Oaken Behemoth? Oh, man, I miss having one of those. Oh, never... yeah, that's a, that's a great card. I love that. I never owned one, but like when I, I was first starting to get serious, um, do you know who uh, Kona is? Uh, Splinterlands Guides TV on YouTube? Um, you know what? I don't watch that much YouTube. Fair enough. Oh, hey, what's good, new one? Yeah. Hey, new one. Korra as a legendary, I don't disagree with, although I'm happy she's epic because I did pull four of them in a row and that would not have happened with a legendary. Um, but yeah, he when I first started getting into it, like, uh, like consuming content and trying to get better he was one of the first ones that I came across and so I reached out to him and whatnot and I ended up doing a kind of a long-term rental off of him of uh, basically a whole green deck and it included the Magi of the Forest and the Resurrector guy and the Oaken Behemoth and I didn't even know Oaken Behemoth was a card until all of a sudden I had one and I'm playing with it and I'm like oh my god this thing is amazing yeah it's really really good and then so yeah the, and then he uh he did some restructuring and whatnot so he ended up taking all of his cards back but i had it for like probably like six or eight months something like that um and it was yeah huge um and yeah i mean i love his content i, I see jb saints also used to watch him uh yeah he's he's definitely awesome sometimes his accent can be a little bit much <laughs> But uh, he's uh, definitely got some really good information, especially for beginners. You know, I, I don't know that he would really have anything to teach, you know, um, you, anything like that. You know, like high level players, he's, you know, I, I think he's still in silver. Um, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong and I don't mean to disparage his name, but uh, like he's not use, a super high level I, player, but for new I players. Could use I could definitely use some tutorials in lower league play because I often get my butt whooped in lower leagues because I suck in low leagues. Uh, but I think that's not uh, like 
that's not because of a lack of understanding of the basics. That's because oh, no. the cards don't do what you're used to them doing. And remembering what cards do what when it's a quarter of what you're actually used to. And it's like, okay, so what's, what ability do you still have and which ones did you lose? Like, I feel like that is probably where your problem is in the lower levels. Um, same as me. Like, trying to remember, okay, Oshanis does not have phase. Yeah. Like, that's... Yeah. A, that's a big one and why why isn't my demon shark retaliating what is going on right <laughs> like yeah that i feel is is where you know the the weakness is for those who have gotten into the higher levels and then are dropping back down um it is really that it's not a, a the lack of understanding of the basics what what kona is really good at is explaining the basics and teaching you like he is what the tutorial should be. Right. I, I kind of feel like he is. And that's why I was so glad that I found him as early as I did. Because, man, I don't know where I would be without him. Because <laughs> <laughs> that tutorial really is trash. <laughs> it's terrible. It is. It's terrible. <laughs> and actually, uh, I, I started the original idea for the Lux account. Like, before I sold all my cards and started doing it on my main, I had started a new account on the app to uh, to try at, or that I was going to do that with. And I'm glad I, I didn't actually follow through with that. I never even bought it the spell book because I just decided to do it on the main account instead when I sold the cards. Right. But, yeah, like, going through that tutorial again, it's like, you know, if I didn't already know this game... I wouldn't know this game, not not from this. And then you know, getting into it and, and going through with you know no owned cards, with no DEC on hand to be able to rent cards. And like that's the thing about the the Lux account too is like, as much as it is kind of a, a factor of going through the new player experience, I also have to you know kind of put a disclaimer on it that this is not the new player experience. I have so many advantages over a new player right now. I am, you know, entrenched within the community. I've got great friends. I've, I've got a Lux. I have a Lux yeah. that is delegated to me that no new player is going to have. Um, yeah. I have 100,000 DEC that I'm sitting on, so I can rent whatever card I want to. And then above and beyond all of that, because yeah, you could, you could buy the Lux, you could buy the DEC for renting whatever, but I have the knowledge of a year and a half of playing this game I know how all of the abilities work. I know how all of the abilities work with each other. And that's one thing is like, yeah, the sources are out there. So you can, you can just go on splinter cards and it'll take some doing, but you could learn all of the abilities, but there is nothing there that's going to show you how they work together. Right. And, and especially with things that, you know, keep changing. Like I'm so glad that they made the adjustment to now, you know, poison hits everybody before anybody dies but before that nothing was mentioned about that anywhere to tell you that that's how it happened uh nothing was mentioned like i did not know until maybe a month ago probably like three weeks ago actually that the person who was on top and the person who was on bottom is actually decided by who puts their team in first i didn't know that either that's huge that's like and and now it's less of an advantage to be on top but it is still an advantage to be on top right um and so yeah that yeah Nguyen didn't know that either apparently yeah if you put your team in first you are on top if you put your team in second you are on the bottom that is exactly how that works and now with the, the changes to poison and whatnot, um, it, it's not as big of an advantage as it was, but that is why, like, yeah, I mean, the, the strategy in poison is just put a, put a scavenger in there and, and put your team in early. Right. Um, because, yeah, then you're going to be the one that's on top and you're going to get the advantage that is given through that uh the craziness of everything hitting everyone but i've still seen you know situations where like even with like blast and uh, uh and uh blast thorns uh any any kind of on hit effect 
like there's still intricacies of how they work that were not solved or changed by the uh the aspect of nobody dies until everybody dies um no this the who goes first when you have the same speed uh cards um range goes first then magic then melee and after that it goes by card level so if we both have a demon shark at um at the same speed but mine's a higher level then mine is going to go before yours and i have actually lost a battle that should have been a draw because i had higher level cards there was one time if you have the exact same cards then uh i believe it is random i don't i don't know 100 percent on that like if it's the same card same level um then it might be random it might be determined by top versus bottom but i don't think it is top versus bottom have a great night jb thank you for joining us um it's uh i'm i'm, I'm not like that deep on it to to understand uh like the exact specificity beyond like the first four tiebreakers um I have not found that information and I know that it has been changed at least twice since I started playing. So, um, that is, yeah, something that unfortunately I can't give you the, the exact information on. Uh, but I, I will research, I will find that because you're right. That is a very important question and it's one that we, we need to have an answer to. Um, but yeah, like just knowing how, like for example, uh, you know, blast with uh, with snipe. Like nobody's gonna know that just coming in automatically. That okay, that's the like one of the best possible combinations of thank you bushwhack uh, of abilities because you're almost guaranteed to be doing double the blast damage every time. But it's uh, like it's kind of there you can figure it out but there's nothing that actually says that really and then like the uh one of the things that i still actually am not 100 percent sure on so with blind does blind automatically affect everybody on the opposing team or is it an on hit effect like affliction or cripple um i don't know so the order in which monsters attack is determined by the following variables in order speed attack type oh and it's magic before range not range before magic so i misspoke there uh rarity monster level and random note if the cards have the same attack type speed rarity and level the move order will be determined randomly <laughs> more rng exactly and i mean i guess that is actually better then if it was always topside goes first because that then gives a, a, even more of an advantage to whoever is is just quicker on the draw and i mean i'm not saying that there shouldn't be an advantage to being quicker on the draw that does make a lot of sense but i feel like that would uh also kind of put things uh a little bit like for me playing on a slower computer a lot of times I don't have the opportunity to go first even if I know exactly what team I'm gonna bring I've still you know I have to load everything up to, in order to be able to select them and we've seen on streams where like I actually time out because the cards just will not select fast enough I have literally been in the middle of picking my team and surrendered on time because my computer was just slow uh, if the battle has a reverse speed rule set, all of the attack order variables are affected, not just speed. So lowest speed goes first. Speed is... Oh, wow. Okay, I did not know that part either. So if the speed is the same, the attack type is reversed. So melee goes before ranged, before magic. And then if the attack type is the same, lower rarity goes first. And then if the rarity is the same, the lower level monster... Oh my god, that is crazy. That sounds really complicated. I'm not gonna remember that. Yeah, yeah, that's redonk. Okay, home team does gain advantage of going first whenever there's a tie in attack order in brawls. 
if their barracks are at least level one. So if they're not, then they don't. Also strange. Um, okay, yeah, no, it is in the description for, for the level one barracks, so that does make sense. Um, team placement, team... All right, and so it's not, because that's actually what I was thinking was like, obviously in the demon shark versus demon shark up front. Yes, yes, Elephantian, we are 100% sure on that. Um, so if it's demon shark versus demon shark up front, then the position obviously wouldn't change anything. But I would have figured that the position would make sense. Like if I've got six speed, six speed, six speed, six speed, then it would make sense, of course, them all being same attack type, whatever, that it would go one, two, three, four. Would just make sense, but... Oh, hey! I recognize the artist of this track. Yeah, exactly. You have a, a benefit from a low-level deck in reverse speed, like that one. I, I can understand low speed, I can understand reversing the attack type, but commons go before legendaries, and then if they're the same rarity, level one goes before max level. Like, that's just asinine. That's I like, agree. That's like eight plus one butts. Asinine. <laughs> <laughs> It is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Especially because, like, you know, some people know how to go in and force their, you know, force a lower level card if they have them. Some people don't. I'm in that latter group. I know that it can be done, but, like, say I've got a, a level 10. Actually, this is something that happened. I, I don't know where it came from, but I guess I was technically not correct when I was saying that my first max level card was O'Shaughnessy. I don't know where it came from, but like months and months and months ago, I got a level 10 Palacore Conjurer. And me building all gold, it's not a gold foil. So I have a level four Palacore Conjurer, which is still higher level than I needed for anything. But every time I would go to play Palacore Conjurer, it would play the regular foil instead of the gold foil, even though they were playing it at level two. And it's like, okay, well, and then I found out that there is a way to go in and choose the gold foil over the regular, but I don't, I still don't know how to do that. I don't know how either. I've never tried. Maybe I meant max level legendary. Well, I, I, I said max level card, period, because it was the first one that I actually procured for myself. I still don't know where. I, I have some suspicions, but... Um, yeah, I think it was actually a Heatsmith and a Conjurer that were uh, just appeared on my account out of nowhere. And the Heatsmith never bothered me because I never played Heatsmith, but the Conjurer threw me off for a while until I started the rental account, and then I just put it on the rental account and problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's like, how does that make any sense um, to have lower level... Another reason for level 7 slip spawn is so good, but I had to go on and level up. Alright, so let's take a look at slip spawn. Hey Rick, I got I have to go. It's it's past my bedtime. I'm so tired. I'm it's, so sorry. To it's me. all good. Thank you for joining. I knew you were going to be Thanks headed out me. about this time, so. Well, I, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate you joining us, and uh, you know, I, I would definitely look forward to uh, doing it again sometime. Yeah, for sure. You have for a sure. great night. Get you some rest, and we will catch you on the flip side. All right. Bye, Rick. Um, I saw the slip spot. Where are we at? Do I actually not have a copy? I guess I don't currently. Okay, let's go. Playable. Night, Luth.
Okay, why am I not seeing it? I know it's a rare. I don't have anything selected there. Here we go. Um, well, yes and no, new, and that's actually the thing that just got changed. So that's how it used to be, um, and that's why if you were on top in poison with a scavenger, you were almost guaranteed to win because on that final round where things matter, then the monsters on the bottom would die one by one by one. Your scavenger just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and then ends up surviving the poison. That has been changed. So now the damage gets dealt to all creatures before anybody dies and if you're at zero yeah i mean it just got changed like this week or last week uh, on on tuesday um so yeah it, it, it's been changed for a week and yeah it doesn't surprise me that the support page hasn't been updated because of the the layoffs and whatnot and uh, the fact that they're really not working on any of that stuff right now. They're working on getting everything kind of uh, set to what they want it to be. And then they'll update all of that stuff because they don't want to be consistently changing it. Which I understand. It's reasoning that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Or... Um, uh, hmm. What was the other option that I... Uh, bloodlust um like i've i've had a situation where uh like grum in a uh, explosive weaponry rule set kills one kills two but number two or what well, no okay yeah grum hits their number one monster, kills him, hits their number two monster, kills him. But their number one monster has retaliate. The retaliate comes and kills Grum before either of the bloodlust triggers happen. Or no, it wasn't blood uh, retaliate. It was, uh, it was redemption. Because that, that has happened to me before. Like, uh, I forget exactly where it came in, but like Grum hit somebody and killed them and also killed the second guy. So he should have gotten two bloodlust triggers and survived whatever it was that came back. I forget if it was retaliate or redemption or whatever it was. But, but because of the way that things were, he actually ended up dying, whereas now he shouldn't. And so I'm, I'm behind that change. Like, I'm 100% I'm in favor of it. Uh, I feel like it's the way things should have been from the get-go. And, I mean, I'm not upset about it not being that way before. But, um, like, it was just something that, you know, was kind of an oversight in the code or something along those lines. And they fixed it. And, you know, now it is more the way it should be. Although it still kind of has some little idiosyncrasies that will pop up from time to time. I don't know them well enough that I can actually explain one away right now because um i haven't been playing as much uh since that change happened and so um like i'm not super familiar with it again but that's something that you know i still i do notice every once in a while it's a it's a lot less common i mean the change was really good and helped out with a lot of things but um yeah and the biggest problem, of course, was those poison matches. Not even so much Earthquake, but the poison matches. Um, and Earthquake to a lesser extent. Because, yeah, those are the ones where it actually affects every single monster, potentially. Is anybody on Splinter Lines TV right now? Yes, Luke is. So what I'm going to go ahead and do 
is we're gonna raid over into Splinterlands TV so I can spend a little bit of time with my lady. And then I will be back on in an hour and 15 minutes for my regular stream. And thank you guys, of course, for joining. It has uh, been a wonderful time and a great discussion. I'm so glad that uh, we were able to take part in the uh, special guest uh, guest stream week. And uh, we'll definitely be uh, back on tonight at our normal time and continue kicking ass or getting our ass kicked. Either way. <laughs> and, and yeah, Nguyen... Um, I am not going to be playing by hand when I'm taking over for you. So you don't have to worry about me raging on that. Like, that it's just not going... Not going to be playing by hand. No such <laughs> luck for us. TV. I'll be doing some trading or some monster flipping or talking about the economy or something. We'll, we'll see what happens in between now and then because I'm sure there'll be, you know, something new to talk about, but we, we will definitely uh, not be going crazy. All right, we're going to go ahead and launch this raid. Thank you so much for joining. As always, I've been Rick. You've been on the mountain, and it has been a wonderful time. We will see you again here in just a little bit. And, uh, hey, that link that just dropped in the chat, go ahead and click on that. Take advantage of some great-tasting energy drinks and uh, support the channel while you're at it. Greatly appreciated. And uh, y'all have a great night. We will see you soon.